What do you do if you want to paint full-time in retirement? This question came up as a comment in last week's YouTube video, and it's actually one that I help artists with through my mentorship all the time. And so this week, I wanted to make a short video going through the exact steps I would take if your goal is to paint full-time and possibly even sell work when you retire. First things first, I want to say that this is a fantastic goal. There's a lot of research that speaks to the value of having purpose in retirement and how it's incredibly good for our health and well-being. And it's part of why I always want to have, you know, a calling. And I don't want to ever just be in a point where I'm sort of adrift. We'll see <laughs> if I'm sticking to this one day when I'm retiring, but the research is there and I want to go ahead and just really give you all the support that I can for having this goal. I think this is a great thing to go after and this is why I'm excited to speak to this. The second thing that I want to say is that the best thing you can start doing is painting now and taking your practice seriously and treating it like a professional now rather than waiting until you know, the first day of the rest of your life post retirement and hoping that you will just fall into this new routine. The reality is, is that painting full time, it requires a lot of adjustment. It requires you to have a new routine, to be really self-starting, to have a lot of structure that you have created. And there's a lot of friction in the painting process itself that it really benefits you to have experience working through already. The great thing about painting in retirement is that, you know, you probably have a retirement fund. You probably don't need to be relying on income from this, but I do know a lot of painters who want to treat this as a job, regardless of whether or not they need to be, you know, earning a certain amount of money from it. So right now, the very first thing that I would encourage you to do is to start treating your practice right now as a professional, even if you do have a full-time work schedule. You don't have to be putting in 40 hour weeks, but you don't want to be approaching your practice as a hobbyist. This helps us get from beginner to proficient, but to get to this place where you're really doing it full time at a high level, there's a different mode of thinking. There's a different mode of solving problems, of developing skills, of keeping things sharp. So go ahead and create a structure for yourself, a schedule for yourself now that really encourages and promotes consistency in your practice. And then be intentional within that schedule. Do you know what skills you want to work on building on any given day? Do you know how long it should take you to finish certain pieces? Have you put aside time to look at reference or work with a model or engage in a photo shoot or photograph past paintings or put them on your website? The next thing is that we really want to be focusing on the painting and you really stepping into your identity as a painter and owning that before we stress about the marketing side of things. This is a really common concern for people who do want to treat this as a business, regardless of whether they simply want the validation that comes from selling work or they need to rely on this for a full-time income. It's really difficult to put the marketing first and the development of your work second. And so what I always encourage painters to do is to really get the work to a place where you are genuinely proud of it and it feels easy to market. This needs to be the first step. And in order to accomplish that, identifying what your goal is, is an essential first part of this. This helps us to understand what it is that you're working toward. It helps us to identify what skills you need to be focused on. And it helps you to understand what it is that you're selling, what you're creating, what you're sharing with people. My favorite way to do this is putting together a vision board for what kind of work you are really drawn to. I have a whole video outlining how I do this and how I like to use this vision board, so I'll go ahead and link this for you to check that out if this feels like a step that's important to you. This video also touches on the next step here, which is once we understand what the goal is, we need to figure out what's standing between you right now and your ability to make that kind of work that you aspire to make. We need to figure out what skills, what techniques, what best practices in the way that you're working, we actually need you to be implementing and working toward. Otherwise, you're just going to wind up spinning your wheels and kind of staying stuck where you are at this place where maybe you aren't as proud of your work as you really need to be to be 
treating this as a business or to be approaching this as a professional. This is a place where having an experienced eye, you know, having a mentor, having a coach can really come in handy because they can actually help you to identify what the weak spots are and just as importantly, suggest the exact exercises that you can use to get your skills to where they need to be. So if that's the kind of help that you think you need, I have a link down in the description talking all about my mentorship as well as a link to apply to see if we are a fit to work together. So last but not least, what do we do if you are new to this? So if you're new to oil painting, if you're new to, you know, painting portraits and you want to be a portrait artist, what is the next step then? Well, in that case, I would say really just getting some brush miles behind you is super important. Here, you know, early in this video, I was talking about this idea of like how you go from a beginner to a hobbyist. And if you're still new to oil or you're still new to portraits, I would say that is very much the place you have to let yourself be in. It's not to say that you can't take your work really seriously and be really intentional with your practice or learn really quickly, but I think it is really important to give yourself that time to enjoy being new at something and just to be honestly open and receptive to learning a new medium or just a new skill set generally. That being said, I think one of the best things you can do while you're here is to actually take classes where you watch really skilled artists work in the method that you want to learn. So if you want to paint portraits in oil, you know, attend workshops or download videos from your favorite artists where they walk you through their process, their full process start to finish. I think it's really easy, especially when we're newer, but I think this happens to us at every stage of the game, where we see a finished product that we're really drawn to and we imagine what it's like to make it and we could not be further from the truth. And actually seeing this demystified, seeing how your favorite artist lays down paint and brings a painting from start to finish successfully, that should really be guiding a lot of your practice in the beginning. And I will mention one thing here, which is that I really do think it's essential to go ahead and try and work toward, again, the technique, the style, the subject matter that you're interested in from the very beginning. So if you want to create you know, loose, expressive, a la prima portraits, I wouldn't spend a lot of time watching you know, indirect painting approaches. Something like a grisaille with glazing or painting processes that take months or are super tight. Go ahead and, you know, use the Pinterest exercise that I talked about earlier to identify your goal. See what artists come up over and over again. Who are you drawn to the most? And then seek out opportunities to learn from them either directly or through things like videos. Then start following along and Once you're at the point where you are pretty darn comfortable, you know, working in oil, painting portraits, working a la prima, whatever the case may be, I think then is going to be the time to circle back to these steps. Thank you again to the subscriber who asked me this question. I thought it was a fantastic one and I loved speaking to this. If you have other questions about how to go full time in your painting once you retire, please let me know in the comments. I would love to reply to you there or turn your question into an upcoming video the way that I did with this one. All right, until next time, happy painting.